Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to do some shop, shop talk and talk about fuses and what causes a fuse to blow and how to check them um, because a lot of people don't understand how to check them properly and they don't understand the difference between an overload uh, on a fuse and an actual fuse blowing. So you can see behind me I have an old fuse panel for demonstration purposes. Um, basically I'm going to talk about the fuses and how to look at the difference of whether it's blown or it's popped. A lot of times it's hard to tell if the fuse is actually blown, which fools people. We get those, those comments and questions all the time. Uh, basically, the, my, I checked all my fuses, they don't look blown. Well, that doesn't mean that it's still working. It could be popped due to an overload. So I'll explain the difference between the two. So this is a fuse panel. You see these in common older homes. Uh, we have one here on the bench just to show you what they look like. Um, and they have a variety of fuses in them, of course. So the biggest thing to pay attention to with these fuses, and I'll zoom up close here, real nice and slow. You can see inside that there's an element in there, okay? Now that element is for overload purposes. So these are 20 amp fuses that you see here. Um, if one of these fuses pull more than 20 amps, that little element inside there will pop out. If that pops out, it doesn't blacken the front of the fuse. So it's really hard to tell that that's blown because it doesn't look blown because immediately you think, well, when a fuse blown, it turns black, which it does, but that is only in a short circuit condition. So if you get a hard dead short for the fuse, this area here will turn black. No question, you can see that, and then obviously the fuse is blown. However, if you get an overload condition with the fuse just drawing more than what it's designed for, then that little element will pop out. When that little element pops out, you don't know it's blown. And those are questions that we get continuously. Now there's really only one good way to check a fuse and that is with a multimeter. Now you don't need anything as expensive as this and I'll put some links in the description uh, below for some good quality uh, multimeters that will help you check fuses. What you're looking for in a multimeter is something that has ohms on it or does an ohm beep because you're going to want to check continuity between the outside and the inside of the fuse to see if it's blown. Now when I talk about a multimeter, I mean an actual multimeter. Something that uh, can detect voltage, amperage, well not necessarily amperage, just has a clamp on amp meter, but voltage, resistance, uh, all, the, all the goodies uh, with electrical. A circuit tester or a circuit tracer is not the same thing. They detect voltage. You need something with the two leads that you're going to be able to check the fuse. Now I'm going to show you exactly how you do that. Okay, so this is a multimeter. On this multimeter, you're going to see several settings. Several settings, you're going to have off voltage, amperage on some models, and then this little squiggly line here. This squiggly line stands for ohms or resistance. So what you're going to want to do is stick your tool or your multimeter onto that setting. And what that's going to do is when you touch those two leads together, you're going to get a beep. You see that? And this is the only true way to check a fuse. So with that fuse, you're going to put one lead on this part of the copper and one lead on the center. The same as you would check a light bulb. So now I'm going to show you, if you go from here to here, you get a beep. That means that fuse is good. That folks is how you actually check a fuse from the center to the back so you can unscrew these fuses from your panel and check them because sometimes it's hard to tell like I mentioned that this is actually blown alternatively you'll see some of the bigger fuse blocks uh, like this is for an actual stove or dryer and on the back of those they have these long cylinder style fuses these fuses you're just going to simply go between the two copper ends. So there and there. That tells me that fuse is good. And the same with this one. 
That tells me that fuse is good. And that, my friends, is how you actually test a fuse to see if it's good. Now, we are completely aware that fuses are starting to become a thing of the past, and most, most uh, newer panels are breakers. However, you're still going to see fuse panels, and you're still going to need to test fuses. So it's good to have a handy fuse tester on hand. Otherwise, you can't really tell, and you may have a whole pile of fuses that just look blown. Anyway, hope you liked this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.